What you guys got another video on PC cable management and we're going to be taking a look at some of the tips that you're going to need to keep your cables nice and tidy when building your PC. So first off, let's remove all of these nasty cable ties. Never use these cable ties for when doing a PC build because they do have little bits of wire in them and if they do touch any metal components like the motherboard, they will short out the board, so don't be using those. Once you've removed all of the cable ties that come with the initial case when you buy it, you can segregate off the cables that you want to use at the beginning. So basically separate everything into individual pairs like this. This way you can start off with keeping all your cables tidy. The next good tip is to use a modular power supply like this one that I have in this build. This is going to allow you to put in just the cables you need to keep the cable management to a minimum, which makes it a lot easier. Next tip is to buy a case that has already good cable management capabilities like this channel down here, plenty of anchor points where you can uh, tie back your cables. A lot of cheaper cases might not come with these cable management channels, which allow you to tie back all of your cables and things like that. Make sure you've got good clearance around here especially if you're putting a lot of rgb fans and other things like that this will help to manage the cables to tuck them into nice little crevices like this so make sure you've got enough space down between your power supply and your hard drive cage there this is going to allow you to tuck in cables down here which we call a stuff and tuck basically so i'm going to put all the cables through i'm not going to show you how to plug them into the motherboard and all that sort of stuff in this video we're going to be talking about just tying back the cables and i'll show you basically what i do i look for places where i can tuck them in now you could possibly tuck this down to this channel here but there is nowhere to tie the cable into here but if that is your only option then that's what you've got to go with but in this case i do have some mounting points here which i can tie these cables to and that's what I plan on doing. But if you haven't got none, you can actually push them in here as long as there's a big enough gap down here. Some of the cheaper cases really do skimp out on this area. And this is where you end up with a big bulging a load of cables in the case and you can't shut the side panel. So make sure that you keep your cable management nice and tidy. So I've mounted this one, one up here. I'm going to use some cable cutters to just nip the ends off. I'm going to put another cable tie inside this one here and tuck in the cable right behind that little uh, lip there. So keep it nice and tight. So make sure you do uh, all your cable management as you go along. So this way you can keep it nice and uh, clean. So remember, don't tie down everything at the beginning until you've fully tested your computer. That's another key tip that I'm going to give you there. I've seen so many people build PCs, cable management, uh, the whole PC and then power it on and it doesn't power on and you have to then undo all your hard work So make sure you're getting a PC that powers on and this is why most people will test it outside of the case first To see whether it's powering on properly before they do all of their cable management like I'm showing you here I've been burnt by that myself before where I've assumed that everything works Okay, and done all the cable management and guess what it didn't work It was a dead motherboard and I had to undo all my hard work so let's go ahead and follow this line down here and do the cable management down here. This is for the CPU uh, cable, and we're just going to nip that off with a pair of uh, cutters here. I'll probably do that from below so you can see. There we go. And just nip that off like so. Now that's done, you can see we do have a cable going here. That's perfectly fine. If you want to go a little bit more crazy with that, you can do. But that's where I'm going to keep it. Now you can put some more cable ties around there if you really want to but there's no need no one's going to see it so that's good enough next up make sure you buy plenty of zip ties because you're going to need them to tie the cables back also don't ever go across any sort of areas that you might want to use later on in the build for instance this hard drive cage here you don't want to be tying the cables right across there because it's going to be messy and you don't really want to do that so we're going to run it up this channel here where these already got a channel here with some uh, velcro ties on here and we're going to run that up there like so now you can see it's just going across the hard drive here and i don't want to do that so if you have i'm not going to populate this area you could theoretically leave that there if you wanted to but there is a cable tie management right there 
and I'm just going to tie it up to there and put the cable tie around that and I'll do that a little bit later. You can also put some more cable ties around inside this channel if you really want to to keep it nice and snug but I'm going to leave it as it is for this one. Now RGB is a major problem because obviously if you've got loads of fans there's going to be loads of cables. You're going to have a power cable and you're going to also have an RGB cable and that means more cable management. So cramming this all into a really small case can be really uh, difficult to do. So make sure you've got an adequate size case to make sure it's easier to cable manage. So I'm going to run these all up here as well, und undo all these uh, uh, Velcro ties here and basically put the cables all the way where I need them. Next up here, I've got some fans at the back here and exhaust fans. So I've pulled the cables through and I'm going to basically tie them onto this location here as well. Now remember to leave enough slack on the cable. Don't tighten the cable so it's so tight and it's stretching and pulling. Otherwise, you're going to end up with issues where the cable might come out. So make sure you've got plenty of uh, slack left inside the actual case and don't pull them too tight here. So you can cable tie this on the, this little mount here if I wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this channel here. You can see this is all done now. And I'm just going to tidy up the rest of this along the bottom here. So like I said, the most important thing really is making sure you've got enough space in your case for the sort of build that you're planning on doing because there's a lot of cables here and it's going to need a bit of organizing. So using a really small form factor case here would be much more difficult uh, and this is much more uh, time consuming and you need to make sure that you know what you're doing when you're using a really small fit case because here we have quite a lot of room down here to put all of our cables and it's not going to be so much of an issue. So you can see I've already tied this one back. And now we've got plenty of room where we can put our hard drives down there at a later date if I wanted to. And we're not going across there. I see that a lot of times where people just run a cable right across. Sometimes you're forced to go across the uh, back of the case. You can't avoid it. But in this case, what we've done here is we've managed to keep everything nice and snug. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to route these into a place and tuck the rest of these in this little hole here. Because if I ever need to go back into here and you cable tie everything down so tight, you're only going to have to literally clip it all this off. So tucking it into that little stuff and tuck hole there, which is what I call it, it's not a problem. That No one's going to see it and it's nice and snug in there and you could just pull it out if you need to and work on the PC. But if you've put way too many cable ties on, which some people will do, and they will cable tie just about everything to make it look really nice and tight, the problem with that is if you ever have to work on your PC, you're going to have to cut all them cable ties off and it undoes all your hard work. And occasionally you might need to go in there and do some work. So just bear that in mind. I've seen that quite a bit with some builds where they use far too many cable ties and it's going to be hard work. You can buy these on Amazon. I'll try and leave some links in the video description, but they are pretty cheap and affordable. It's all different colors. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put another one here to lift this up a little bit more. And then once you've got these into position, you can tighten these down and they'll look perfectly fine. Now, there's a lot of judgmental people on YouTube. So when you're building a PC, they will critique all of your hard work and really don't listen to them, really. Because at the end of the day, as long as you can get the side panel on with ease and no one's going to see these cables, you don't have to go overboard and make it so it's like so perfect that uh, you're going to get awards for it. Because no one's going to give you an award for having super tidy cables. But again, if you're OCD, then maybe uh, spend a bit more time. This is good enough, but some people will go as far as adding even more cable ties around here to make it even more tidy if they wanted to. But as long as I can put the side panel on, that's all that really matters. Now, when it comes to cable extensions like this one here, things were a little bit more difficult because obviously we don't have a channel. The cables are resting on the back panel, which means you've got to get it nice and flush to make sure the back panel goes on there. And that's going to be a bit more difficult. You can see there's nowhere to tuck some of these cables. So you have to use a little bit of ingenuity to try and get them to sit flush so you can get the back panel on there. But I managed to do an okay job here. No one's going to see this, but at the end of the day, if you are planning this, make sure you plan it very well. So I'm going to poke the cables through here for the uh, GPU here. And again, if you was using extensions, you would have to still... Uh, tuck and stuff these cables into an area down here to hide them because there is quite a lot of cables then that you're going to add to that build. 
So I can't stress enough, really sort of plan your build first and then choose the right case that for your build. That is the most important step is having the right case and make sure you look at all the pictures on the website to see all the good anchor points and make sure it's got the correct channels for your cable management. If it's if it's not got any of that stuff for your sort of build, then don't buy it because you're going to end up having a big major headache, especially if you want tons of fans and also tons of cable management. It might be a squeeze to get it all in there and you might have a problem. And I've noticed nowadays these cases are even coming screwless where you just slot them in and push them on. So your cable management is going to have to be on point to make sure that you've got all of your cables nice and tied back. Otherwise, it's just going to keep popping off and falling off. So make sure you plan your build properly and buy the right case for the build that you're doing and that you've got plenty of anchor points and plenty of space for your cable management. This little area here can sometimes be very, very useful. And on some cheaper cases, the hard drive cage is riveted and you've got a long power supply, which is non-modular. You can run into problems, especially if this gap here is not big as well. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three. I really do appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.